The Toronto Raptors have a few keys to success. Despite having multiple games postponed, their home attendance cut in half by the Ontario government, the team's leading scorer for a while in OG Ananobi missing a significant chunk of time with a bruised hip, and a ton of players down on health and safety protocol, the young and scrappy team north of the border has persevered. Only half a game back of the 8th seed in a non-typically competitive Eastern Conference, Toronto's won 5 of their last 7 games, and could have easily been 7-0 in that stretch, as they lost to OKC and Brooklyn by 1-2 points respectively. Led by a mesmerizingly poised rookie on the wing, an overlooked point guard having a breakout season, and a flurry of active, lengthy, and versatile players on the perimeter, let's delve into every facet for why what the Raptors have going could ultimately lead to not only sustained success, but a revolutionary impact into the next era of basketball. Quickly, only 12% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I may just follow you back. We're going to lead with Pascal Siakam. He may have had an off night against New York, but other than that outing and before he was placed on health and safety protocol, Spicy was starting to turn it around. The former All-Star is slowly but surely beginning to re-establish himself as a top-notch weapon on both ends of the floor, after somewhat struggling to adjust to the role of being the team's number one guy, really ever since Kawhi's departure in 2019. This season, with OG Ananobi in and out of the lineup, a man who was leading the team in scoring by a solid amount before he got hurt, that initially made it tough for Pascal to find a rhythm within the Raptors' offense this year. But again, the man's been showing flashes of the player who was the second option in the championship run a few years ago. This month, Pascal's still under 25% from three-point range, which has been a slight concern, but it's not like if Coach Nurse told him to stop shooting, he wouldn't oblige. There's an argument to be made that Pascal should just focus on attacking the basket and doing his thing in the mid-range, but regardless of whether he's hitting threes, the threat of him knocking it down adds spacing to the Raps' offense. While Pascal increasing his value tremendously benefits the Raptors in various ways, even with Siakam as well as Gary Trent Jr. recovering from the variant, the team can continue their current hot streak. GTJ will be a big loss, as his scoring is extremely valuable to the team. But at least you've got OG and Achua back, Fred and Scotty's chemistry is building up, and Chris Boucher is showing signs of life. We'll see if Nick Stauskas can finally prove himself to be a legit NBA player with his three-point shooting. It should be interesting to see the Mississauga native get some run for his hometown team. The fact that I think Toronto can still keep their winning going, despite GTJ, Siakam, and Banton on health and safety protocol, has everything to do with their depth on the wing, which minus Pascal still includes six players who stand at least six foot nine, and five players with at least a wingspan of seven foot one inches wide. Utah Watanabe's activity in the passing lanes, his overall effort defensively, combined with his ability to knock it down from deep range at a fairly efficient 36% clip, that'll allow him to make up for a lot of what Siakam brought to the table. Of course, he's not the defender or inside scorer that Siakam is, but considering Watanabe's been more consistent from beyond the arc than Pascal, barring that continues for Utah, Toronto's spacing and execution should be at a similar and potentially better rate with Utah filling in for Spicy. We've yet to see OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam play in many games alongside each other in the 2021-22 season so far, and even though it's a small sample size, in terms of the Raptors' team stats, the numbers when OG and Siakam are on the floor simultaneously aren't pretty. It's only been five games, but the Raptors played three division opponents in that stretch, and with Siakam and Ananobi both playing, they went 1-4. They lost to the bottom-feeding Detroit Pistons on their home floor, and they were heavily outplayed by Cade Cunningham and Detroit, who just came off a 14-game losing streak and are currently dead last in their division at 5-24. And it's not the fact that either Siakam or Ananobi shot poorly in those games, but there's potentially some redundancy given Siakam and Ananobi. They both like to get it done in ISO situations, working one-on-one. -on -one. Individually, they're solid ISO weapons, but the lack of ball movement in Toronto's offense overall, and also this seamless flow when one of them is playing instead of them both, that's extremely evident. Scotty Barnes continues to look wise beyond his years, which I broke down in a separate video you can watch right here. I'll leave a link in the description. While the postponed games have been a massive bummer for Raptor fans and really fans across the entire NBA, maybe this is all just a blessing in disguise and the extended rest 
will help keep Toronto's rookie sensation from hitting the infamous rookie wall. Considering an NCAA season is around 25 to 35 games, the rookie wall in the NBA usually occurs when a first year player gets anywhere from that amount of games to around 50 pro outings under their belt. At that point, usually rookies get tired, but Barnes has been setting the league on fire in the first year of his career, and based off his poise operating in screen and roll scenarios, and his ability to scope out both defensive and offensive sets so fluidly, he's the best rookie in this class. Evan Mobley of the Cavs, in my opinion, is a very close second, but Barnes hasn't only been a top contributor, but he's been one of the two most valuable players on his team. With his defensive impact and shot creation, I'd give it to Fred Van Vliet, but Barnes is still arguably Toronto's most important player. Cleveland has other guys like Darius Garland and Jarrett Allen who are easily more valuable to their team's success than Mobley. Conversely, Barnes is right next to Van Vliet as Toronto's most valuable contributor. Again, no disrespect to Mobley, the man is showing out in Cleveland. I made a video on the Cavs the other day, so go check that out. Of course, with the postponements, their government restricting thousands of Canadians from all over the country who fly over for games to see their team play in person, there's been some panic. Omicron spreads extremely fast, it's dangerous just like any other variant. However, Omicron, just like the COVID-19 virus in general, it's not going anywhere. And trying to appeal to the CP24 viewers who are fear-mongered out of their mind doesn't sit well with normal, average people in Ontario. Of course, we take precautions. That's why we get vaccinated twice and wear masks in our seats when we're not eating or drinking like you demand us to. No one's gonna say it because they're gonna be afraid to, so I am. To leave your people with the news of cutting capacity after just getting back to normalcy, that's a complete disgrace to me. Don't get me wrong, the Raptors are going to make it through this without a loud home arena intimidating their opponents and getting them the benefits of the ref's whistle. But one of the best people to ever play in the Raptors organization in Danny Green, who won a title with the Raps in 2019 and has won three of them in total, commented on the Raptors Instagram post revealing they were cutting capacity in half. You could see Danny right at the top of the comments, he had the top one, and he simply just left five facepalm emojis. It's disappointing for everyone that postponements are happening. But it's also laughable that Toronto's the only team in the NBA without a home court advantage. More crucial than the advantage fans give the team, it's the well-being of the people of this great province that seems to be of little interest to the government of Ontario, but on a more positive note, I made this video because I know with their depth, talent, and front office, the Raptors can fight through this adversity. And sure, opposing stars are going to look to kill them without a legit home crowd behind them, but the Raptors have to be prepared for that. So for the Raptors who are still in the lineup, keep your masks on boys and do your best to stay out of health and safety protocol because with the talent currently healthy and not battling COVID, as of the recording of this video, this Raps team is still capable of getting it done. I believe in Fred, Scotty, OG, and the boys, as there's enough shot creation and defense on the roster, and I'll be cheering my ass off, unfortunately not at Scotiabank, but from my humble abode. This was D-Flow, two shoutouts next video for the question currently on your screen. Hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next time.